Hello and welcome to my textile adventures. If this is your first look at my videos, I'm Kay Harland and I have been making quilts and textile art for about 30 years now. It's been a fascinating journey, starting in the USA and now continuing on in Australia. This video is one in a series about the concepts, approaches and techniques that I use in my work every day. They're divided into sections, one for each major area of what I do and how I do it. This initial set of two videos contains over two and a half hours of information, covering lots of key techniques and ideas that you can use for so many of your quilt projects. I explain and demonstrate and use my quilts to show you what I mean. The series covers landscape quilting and the first video is about skies. It starts with teaching you how to select fabrics and colours that help you create the moods and feelings you want in a particular scene. I show you how to create skies by painting fabric when you can't find exactly what you want. You can also see how to add texture when needed. Stenciling through white lace is one approach. Then you can use the coloured lace pieces for more textured effects. I also show you how to use different materials to make 3D clouds and then stabilising them. You can pick up some tips and tricks to overcome little hiccups along the way, like covering up spots you don't like. And if you have leftover painted pieces, make postcards. I demonstrate how I work with a sewing machine. Selecting feet, open toes for visibility are my favourites. Needles, threads, tension and stitches. And I also take you through free motion stitching and enhancing the surface with thread to make you feel more comfortable with these techniques. I've shown you some of my basic techniques to do with skies. Now you can go and have fun. The second disc is all about backgrounds. Even more than the sky, the background sets the stage and creates the world for the rest of your piece. It helps to convey the perspective and it needs to work with the sky in mood and light. We'll look at more of my examples and I'll explain why I chose the background I did. The next hill here is darker again. You see how these colours merge together and you don't get the definition of this mountain and this next hill. He also, I'm calling it a he, has got lots of wiggle edges to it for detail, which makes it look as if it's a lot closer. I do like this fabric though, and it could work if this foreground piece was where that mountain is. Painting or splodging fabrics is usually a matter of altering fabric for backgrounds to achieve the colour or texture you're looking for. This fabric, um, that was in the bargain bin, and unless you're a moose and fox person, um, I don't think it's everyone's cup of tea, but I loved the actual colours in here. And so what I did was I just went splodge splodge with my sponge, and it makes really, really interesting background fabric, don't you think? I show you how to heat cut stencil patterns with a wood burning tool. Got to hold your mouth right when you do this. And how to do stencil brush painting. Mm -hmm. 
Altering fabric with bleach is another useful technique covered in this video. Isn't that amazing? Here are some visual samples of my freezer paper technique. And also techniques for working with Blyzafix. Fussy cutting, for example. It's a great way to make natural looking edges. I explain invisible stitching. If you are sewing a velvet, it's a lot thicker, isn't it? So you would have to make the bite a little bit wider to encompass the thickness of this fabric. If you were to sew an organza, that's a lot thinner. And then your bite would be smaller. Watch this needle here, because sometimes when you're stitching with, with some of the um, stitches on your machine, like this one, the needle hugs right up against that foot. So I'm going to move it over two places to the left. Can you see that? And I find I have complete control when I'm holding onto it like this. But what I'm trying to do is just to arrest those edges, just like I was doing on the sample piece. And it can look like gum trees or bushes. Try not to make it even. Try to have little groups of things. Now, doesn't that look lovely? These techniques close out the video. Well, almost. Another quick and yummy recipe from Kay's Kitchen is waiting, just to finish off the day. This is my husband board's rosemary dip. 